All right, today we are wrapping up the All Mountain Showdown. We tested the Ibis Ritmo, the Santa Cruz Hightower, the Yeti SB130, and the Transition Sentinel. We went back to back. We've got all four of those videos out, published live now. Go check those out, then come back to this one to see how they all stack up against each other. Let's get into it. <laughs> Right off the bat, let's talk about a couple things we're not comparing. We're not comparing weight, we're not comparing components, and we're not comparing price on any of these. Due to inventory issues, all of these builds were just all over the place, all across the board. We had high-end stuff, we had mid-range stuff, so it's not really fair to compare weights, components, or price. Get that out of here, we're not doing that. The second thing that I probably should have done before we even started was define an all-mountain bike. That's my bad, we're gonna do it right now. We did shoot a video a couple months ago about what type of bike you should buy. That will explain, you know, XC bikes, trail bikes, all-mountain bikes, enduro bikes. In this video, we're gonna talk about what an all-mountain bike is. First of all, generally a bike between 140 and 160 millimeters of rear travel. You know what, let's go back. An all-mountain bike, by definition, should be able to go everywhere on the mountain. It should go uphill, it should go downhill. Kind of like a trail bike. So what makes it different from a trail bike? Trail bike generally has a little bit less travel. It's a little more geared towards easier terrain, not quite so burly, not such a big bike. What differentiates an all-mountain bike from an enduro bike? Well, in my mind, an enduro bike is made for one thing, and that's racing enduro. So you go take it on a mellow blue trail, it's probably not gonna be a ton of fun but you go take it down a double black diamond and go as fast as you possibly can against a clock. Yeah, great bike for that. So an all mountain bike sits between there. It's not kind of a lighter duty, a little bit faster climbing, easier trail, trail bike, and it's not an enduro race bike. That said, it does a lot of both of those things. It goes uphill pretty well. It can race downhill if you want it to. And this isn't a hard and fast rule. It's not every bike with 140 millimeters of rear travel is an, is an all mountain bike. That's not the case. There are some bikes that blur the lines. The Yeti SB130, it's got less travel, but rides more like the other all mountain bikes. And then, you know, geometry, it's not always that kind of 64, 65 degree head tube angle that puts you in the all mountain category. Transition Sentinel 63 and a half, which Technically is closer to most of the enduro bikes, but it rides more like most of the all mountain bikes. All right, let's jump into the good stuff. Uh, the stuff you probably actually wanna know and not just listen to me rambling for the last two minutes. All right, climbing performance. The top dog winner of the climbing category is that Ibis Ripmo. It is incredibly fast uphill, super efficient, gives you tons of traction, and it smooths out the trail very well. The geometry is great too. It puts you in a really good climbing position for kind of those tough, steep, tight technical climbs. So that's why it takes the top spot. The Yeti SB130 comes in right behind it. It's super close. It is every bit as efficient, if not more efficient than the Ritmo, but I don't feel like it smooths out the trail quite as well on the climbs and doesn't give you quite as much traction when things get steep and technical. That's why it takes the number two spot. And then honestly, I think it's a toss up between the high tower and the Sentinel where each one kind of has its own strengths. The high tower is a little bit smaller, a little more nimble. So when you get into the tight technical uh, climbs, the, the high tower is a little easier to maneuver. I think the Sentinel is maybe a little bit more efficient, but still smooths out the trail as well as that high tower and gives you as much traction. It's just that it's a bigger bike. So when you get in the tight technical stuff, it's a little tougher to maneuver. You have to plan those corners and swing really wide. Now the fun part, downhill performance. The hands down winner of this category is the Transition Sentinel. Not only in the fact that it's the most burly, which it is, it's also still super fun, lively, and engaging to ride. It doesn't get boring. A lot of big burly bikes just are boring on easier, mellower terrain. But the Sentinel is not one of those bikes. It stays incredibly lively and fun and is still super burly when you need it to be. Right below that, I think we've got the Santa Cruz Hightower. That suspension is plush. It is so grounded, so smooth, so controlled underneath you. It's like you're riding a hoverboard. It's just So that's why it takes the number two spot, even though maybe the geometry isn't quite as aggressive as some of these other bikes. That suspension more than makes up for it. Next up, again, bit of a toss up between the Yeti SB130 and the Ibis Ritmo. They each, again, do different things well. The Ritmo is very, very lively, very poppy, very fun to ride. It sits a little higher in the travel and I think that's why it makes it so fun and poppy. But that also makes it not quite as grounded, not quite as stable or planted as the Yeti SB130. 
SB130, even though it has less travel, feels a little bit more stable than the Ibis Ripmo. It also feels fast. This thing is designed for performance. It's designed for speed. It's not the most comfortable maybe, and it's not the most plush bike, but it is super fast. And what I mean by that, it's not like the fastest through the roughest terrain or the fastest uphill on the nastiest climb, but I think if you were to do an average time of your entire loop, that SB130 might be the fastest bike in the whole group. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Who should buy what, what, which? Who should buy which bike? I wanna help you understand where each of these bikes is maybe the happiest, and I'm going to do it with trail ratings, um, which can vary depending on where you live. You know, a Black Diamond in Utah isn't the same as a Black Diamond in Canada or even Colorado for that matter. And this is where the bike is happiest. It's not the dead limits. You know, you could go easier or harder on each one of these bikes, but this is kind of the sweet spot where the bike is happiest. So the Ibis Ritmo, I think it's going to be happiest on easy blues to tough single black diamond trails. And again, you can ride harder and you can ride easier, but where it's happiest, that sweet spot, easy blues to tough black diamonds. The high tower, I think it goes from a standard blue, like a good old proper blue, to an easier double black diamond downhill. The Yeti SB130 is gonna be really close to the Ritmo in its happiest trail difficulty range. So I'd go easy blue to tough black diamond. Honestly, my best lap down Grafton Mesa, which, you know, pretty proper double black diamond trail was on a standard SB130. So that really goes to show you that these are not hard and fast rules. And lastly, that Sentinel is going to be happiest on tough blues to the toughest double black diamond trail you wanna ride. Hopefully this helps you kind of wrap your head around where each bike would be happiest. So pull open your Strava, pull open your trail forks, uh, your journal, your diary, wherever you keep your rides and really look at the types of trails you ride and that might help you decide which bike is gonna be best for you. So if you're looking for the best climber and maybe the most easygoing bike, Ibis Ripmo, that's gonna be your ticket. If you want the most all mountain, all mountain bike and you want the plushest bike, you can't go wrong with the Santa Cruz Hightower. If you want the most responsive bike and probably the fastest average speed in an entire loop, Yeti SB130. And if you want the best bike on the downhill and still not too bad uphill, Transition Sentinel. We're super stoked at the response on this All Mountain Showdown. We've had a lot of good, positive feedback. Uh, we'll probably be doing more of these in the future. So if there are bikes you wanna see, let us know. And if there's a bike you want out of this group and you're trying to find it, hit us up. Send us an email at info at bebikes.com and we can try our best to help you find one. Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next time. Tree. <laughs>